question. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I've been given the night shift. Um, so um, for those of you who are tired after a, a full on day, if you've been here all day, um, I'll, I'll, um, I can't say I'm gonna make it exciting. Uh, what I'll try and do is um, make it thought provoking. Um, and that's my plan today. So I wanted to talk, um, whilst Mike talk, said I, I'm lead on values, um, my talk today is going to be more about uh, entrepreneurship and, and taking a bit more of a helicopter view of, um, of um, life at work and what that means. And I want to start off by um, saying a little bit about well, something I picked up this morning from the BBC was that you may have seen this as a new, um, a new um, dragon in the dragon's den. Uh, and he's a 28 year old man, a black man called um, Stephen Bartlett, uh, which is a bit of a revelation for the dragons. He doesn't wear a suit, never worn a suit ever. Uh, and he will bring a different complexion, I think a young complexion into what Dragon's Den is all about. Um, and it, it will change the dynamic. Um, so it'd be really interesting to watch it. I'd encourage you to. I found Dragon's Den pretty boring, to be honest. It's all about how much money they can make. Hopefully this will be a little bit of a change up to um, the, the excitement of the entrepreneurial journey. Um, but we'll, we'll see. Um, he talks about the importance of autonomy. And I guess that's really the context of what I want to talk about today. Um, what do we mean by autonomy? Um, and, and how does that work in the workplace? So um, excuse me for keep looking up. I'm just referring to some notes which are on the screen above me. Um, so I wanted to start with um, the understanding of what work is about and looking at the uh, sectors of work that are available to us. And I've divided it into four. The, I've taken this, um, uh, these concepts, by the way, from uh, the manuscript I'm writing for my second book, which hasn't got a title yet, and it's been two years in the making so far. And I've put it away for the last six months, so who knows when it will come out. But the first section is about the working sectors. Uh, and what that actually means. And I've divided them up into four, and that is the public sector, the professional sector, the corporate sector, and the entrepreneurial sector. And I just wanted to address briefly what those sectors are all about. This is very much a generalization. It's very much a concept, um, and you'll have your own views on, on these sectors as well. But I'm looking at it specifically from a point of view of autonomy, really. So the public sector is obviously this is the, the, the realm of the public servant uh, and it's a vocational sector. So you look at the um, council workers, government workers, um, teachers, um, policemen, uh, that sort of thing, uh, ed education and uh, health, all public sector. And public sector is obviously it's about um, wanting the people who work there want to provide a service to the public. And it's a very good thing. To, uh, it's a calling. It's a vocation. Um, but also within the public sector, you have quite a lot of bureaucracy around protocols and policies and rules and regulations. And it's those control mechanisms that create, I think, um, difficulty within that sector. Um, so that's the um, public sector. Then in the, the private sector, is, I split into three sections, which is the, the first one being the professional area, professional arena. Uh, and this is my arena. I started off as a chartered accountant, trained as a chartered accountant. I was working in the professional sector. Um, and professional people are people who tend to follow rules. I hope I'm not going to upset anybody by saying these things. As I said, it's a concept and it's general. Um, but there is a tendency for following rules and applying those rules to your clients. Uh, I know there are exceptions to this rule. Um, and as an accountant, that's exactly what I did. Uh, I trained with audit manuals and accounts manuals, and we had to follow rules. We had the huge tax manual to follow. Uh, and you apply those rules. And, and so the whole arena tends to be quite rule bound. And that's an important concept, uh, I think, as in, the, in the context of what I'm talking about. In the uh, management, so the, the corporate sector, there's a where you have a tendency towards uh, management control. So the, there is the primacy of the profit motive, which can transcend the, our human nature to do the right thing. Uh, and there is um, hierarchy in the corporate sector because it, they're so big, um, you've got hierarchy of management and that can encourage competition amongst staff and, and the resultant power and control dynamic that that leads on to. Uh, and the striving for your career prospects. 
in that industry or that sector. Um, and in contrast to all those, you have the entrepreneurial sector. And I, I'm looking there at people who run their own businesses, but not only that, but people who work for people who run their own businesses, say typically less than 10 employees, where the owner will know all of their team. Um, and um, it's probably about a third of the people working in the private sector work in that, you know, the less than 10 employee businesses. Um, and it's a sector which is growing and has been growing for well over 30 years. All my life, I've seen that sector. I've been working in that sector. Uh, when I left the accountancy profession, I started working in uh, doing, uh, giving advice and support to small businesses through an organization called the Thames Business Advice Center uh, and more beyond that. And um, they, this, I've noticed the, the growth in that sector and it, even more so now with the millennium generation kicking in and uh, bringing social purpose um, and you know, the, the importance of the, the, um, the change in the profit motivation. Um, and it's growing faster. Um, and in the entrepreneurial sector, there's a choice for freedom and a choice for pursuit of passion. And those are the two main staple reasons why people start the business. Um, freedom being a freedom from the control dynamic of other sectors uh, and passion being um, understanding your purpose or your why, what, what, is, what it is that you like about what you're doing and, and, and doing that more and more. And, and a lot of people I've met in business are doing exactly that. And whilst the, there is a, a necessity to make money, of course, we all have to live. It's that um, the, the, the feeling of independence, the autonomy of being able to work for yourself um, is, is a very big factor. And, and the idea of doing something that you love doing is a very big factor, which you can't always do in the controlled dynamic of the other three sectors. So as I said, the other three sectors are dominated by, but not exclusively by protocols, policies, rules and regulations. Um, and of course, that actually suits some people, um, the, uh, a lot of people. It's um, people enjoy the comfort of the sameness of what they're doing day by day, year after year. Uh, we've had people like that join my company um, and there's nothing wrong with that. There, there's, um, there's uh, that, that's, each person can, is happy to do the, what they want to do. Uh, you can't blame anyone um, for wanting a comfortable life. Um, and the, and the attractiveness of that is, is that you can't be blamed for error if you're only doing what you're told to do. Um, so that's what, the, um, that's what you find quite often in the, in the first three sectors. So um, the, the, the sector of um, entrepreneurship is more about breaking away from that. Um, and it's about... Um, uh, you know, wanting to um, have the autonomy to do your own thing. And that's really important. Control, uh, in a sense, it, control comes from fear and, and it creates fear. Uh, control comes from perfectionism. Uh, and often in a, 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 some organisations, a manager will want things done exactly the way they've always done it. And they will instruct their people, their team to do things in a certain way. Um, there's a very big difference between controlling your team and encouraging and supporting your team. So think of it in terms of, I want you to do this and this is how you do it, as opposed to this is the objective uh, and you can work out your own way of doing it and I'll support you in that. There's a big difference between those two. And, we, and for a lot of people, we really want the autonomy to be able to do our own thing in our own way. So um, this is why um, I like the arena of the entrepreneur because um, I, I mix with people who are, to me, exciting to be with. They've got ideas, they've got uh, motivation, uh, and they're keen on what they're doing. And all my tenants have been like that. And all the people I've worked in, with uh, in advice and mentoring services have all been like that. And I'm sure you'll all recognize that kind of um, dynamic. Um, so what is an entrepreneur? Um, I like to think of it in terms of... Um, an entrepreneur is someone who's pursuing their passion uh, and is excited to be free to do that. Uh, and in doing that, uh, one of the things that comes up is the importance of change uh, um, and how, how possible it is to adapt to change. And, and the way I look, look at change is in, in four 
sections. Um, the first section is that um, we have our heads down and we're doing the same thing day by day by day, year by year. Um, and we don't really see anything about change, except suddenly change happens. Um, and when change happens to us, we have to find a way to adapt to it. Um, and organisations are, are, there's lots of organisations that have not been able to adapt to change. And just looking at the, for example, the electric car industry and, and compared to the legacy industry, um, the legacy industry don't want to change, they're being forced to. Um, they, would, they should have seen this coming a long time ago. And now they're just starting to make the changes that are necessary to bring some electric vehicles into their ranges. But it's a really interesting dynamic watching that story unfold. Uh, another story would be someone like Dyson who brought in the, the, um, the cyclonic vacuum cleaner, which Hoover tried to buy off him and, and, and bury because it was disrupting their own business. Um, so these things happen when they happen to us, whether we like it or not. So you can be a person who um, misses the change, but, but has to change anyway. Or more, more the entrepreneurial arena is um, we see change and we, and we adapt quickly. Change is upon us and we adapt very quickly because we have to. And we can because we're a small organization and we can make changes quickly. Um, the third, better than that, is to say, Hmm, I can see change coming. I can see the storm clouds of change over the hill there. And, and, I, um, and I know what's going to happen. So I'll adapt before it happens so that I'm ready for it. And a lot of people I know uh, in business do exactly that. It's a really good place to be. But the best place is to be the person that makes the changes in the first place. So you, are the, you can be the one that makes the changes in your industry. And I've tried to do that a couple of times. I mean, I, it, I guess these things are relatively rare, but um, in my own industry, which is commercial property, um, I got rid of the, um, the, the legal side of the lease and started doing the leases myself. Um, and so instead of a 36 page lease, which is a controlling document, I created a four page lease, which is a freeing document. Um, and I, I haven't got time to discuss the, the details of that, but there's a difference between control and fear in relation to the landlord tenant relationship and that's what I undermined by doing that. So it's not just about change, uh, it's not just about embracing change, it's about being excited by change and I know plenty of people in business who I've discussed it with and we've laughed about it. If things remain the same for too long we, we start to get a bit bored and we start to like, say okay I'm, I'm going to make change happen, I'm going to do something disruptive deliberately to stir up the team or to stir up the customers or to, to do something to make things different just for just for the heck of it really just for the enjoyment of it and just for the fact that we can um, and see what see what spins out um, so a lot of my friends have, in business have done exactly that it's exciting and it's dynamic uh, and actually it's those it's the changes in in business life i think that create wealth have the, have the opportunity to create wealth in our society and, it, and it, they primarily come from the entrepreneurial sector. I should say by the way that um, whilst I talk about the four sectors of work, uh, you know, the, the public sector, the corporate, um, the professional and, and the entrepreneurial, you as a person of course um, can work out, try to work out which kind of person you are. Are, are you a person who's comfortable in the public sector are you or the corporate sector or a professional sector or the entrepreneurial sector because you, you can be an entrepreneur in the public sector but you would probably find yourself a bit of a round pig in a square hole or the other way around um, and equally you could be a bureaucratic or corporate person in the entrepreneurial sector and it wouldn't really work out so I think there's a tendency towards equilibrium where people who are minded to be professional would end up in the professional services and people who are corporate would end up in the corporate arena and so on. And so for me, I want my people who join my business to be entrepreneurial. So we have to go through a process of how do you make that happen? And I think one of the things you can all do is think about how do you fit in with the sector that you're in? Do you fit in with that? So many people I've met in my life who have had very good careers in the corporate sector, for example, and good at salary, and left it because they didn't like the control dynamic that they were facing, the way they were being treated, the, the shutdown of their ideas and decided to leave that arena and, and start up on their own and take on 
all the risks and anxieties and worries of the roller coaster journey that we have as entrepreneurs. Um, and finding your way it, through those um, sectors to the one that suits you is, I think, an important part of life. It took me quite a long time. I started in professional, I went through corporate, and I ended up working with a, a smaller building company and then ultimately for my father and running the family business, which when I started, there were two of us. Um, and when I left, there were 15 of us. So and there was growth in that. Not that, not that small businesses have to grow. It, that's a fallacy, by the way. Um, so I wanted to say something, so that's entre entrepreneurship generally. I wanted to say something a little bit about leadership and especially in the context of my own business in the five minutes that I've got left. And I haven't looked at the chat room at all. Is there any questions in there, Mike, that I need to answer? Probably not. I'll, no, I'll assume not. Yet. Carry on. I'll, keep, I'll keep going. Um, so um, individuals are entrepreneurial, right? Um, um, but leaders are only leaders if you have followers. I, I think you become a leader when you have a follower, right? So it's important, I think, to understand the difference between the different types of leadership. We tend to think of leadership as someone who's been put in a position to lead us, um, like the prime minister, for example, or someone who's a, a senior person in the, the council leader, for example, they're actually called leaders. And so we tend to think of leadership as being an executive position. And I would call that executive leadership. But there's a very big difference between that and authentic or natural leadership. And an authentic leader is someone who is following a purpose or, or a passion, pursuing their passion, doing what they want to do with their life. Um, and to do that, you have to understand what it is you want, try and define it, and then more importantly, probably, or as importantly, communicate it. And if you can do that, you then become a leader. Um, and a really good video to watch is the leadership dance, which you'll find on YouTube, which explains that process. Everyone can be a leader. It's not something exclusive to senior people. And I want in my team, everyone to be a leader and everyone to be an, uh, an entrepreneur. By entrepreneurial, I mean, have out their ideas and be able to carry them out. And in terms of leadership, I mean, someone who understands the purpose that we're working towards and is able to freely make decisions, knowing that those decisions fit within the purpose. And a, a decision for our purpose is to create an environment where people feel valued. So if one of my team makes a decision that does that, um, and even if it's against um, the profit motive, which we, we have that as well, um, that doesn't matter. It's more important to try and do something which makes people valued, but it has to be contextual and it can't be making losing loads of money uh, but everyone has to work that out for themselves um, and you can only do that if you create that in your team and that really was what my first book was about how we did that in in my team so i'm coming to the end of my time i wanted to just say um i'd encourage you all to lead i would encourage you all to lead with love with respect with fairness and honesty and trust um, these are the core values that I try to work with. Uh, and you have to be, it's very, very important that you are consistent with those values. If you do that, then you will create a business which is, a, um, which is attractive and you will attract the best customers and you'll attract the best staff, especially with the millennium generation who are looking, the best people in the millennium generation are looking for the best companies to work for. We don't interview people anymore, they interview us. They want to know about us and what we do. That's true of customers just as much as it is about staff. Um, and it's really important as a leader, really important to listen. Um, and I'll just finish up with a couple of things. Um, Simon Sinek, I had a quote from him this morning that came in, says, the joy of leadership is to see others achieving more than they thought themselves capable of. Um, which is a really lovely concept, something that I've talked about with other friends in business, of course. The joy of business is seeing our staff, our team develop. And you can do that through leadership and through entrepreneurship. And we've done that to all of our staff, including me, have grown in the sense of self-esteem um, and, and, um, and self-belief all on their own. And just finally, on taking on the first employee, and I know I'm going back to go over time, but on the first employee, it's a really important concept here. And I did a, the, subject, the subject of my TED talk, um, which you can have a look at. 
Um, when you run your own business and you've got to a stage where you're growing and you need to take on your first employee and you're running this business based on entrepreneurship and leadership with all the values that you have and doing it the way you want to do it, what we tend to do is think, I've got too many jobs on, I need to employ someone. And then you think, what jobs can I get those people to do? And you write down all the jobs you want them to do and you put an advert out for someone to do those jobs. And that person then comes in, says they can do their jobs, you employ them, they do those jobs and immediately you've trapped them in a box. You've given, you're controlling them, you're managing them. And you know, you might be, have been a person who's come away from that management dynamic of control in a, in a corporate or bureaucratic sector uh, and you want the freedom and you, you value that. And yet what you're doing is putting your own people in a box. So I'd encourage you to think about that if you're thinking of taking on your first employee and instead think about taking on someone who you can get on with, who you feel shares your values where you can enjoy having them working with you, sharing out the roles and responsibilities. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it at there. Um, the idea today was to give you a bit to think about. I hope I've done that. Um, and please feel free to contact me. And if any of you are gonna be uh, at Abingdon shortly, I'll, I'll pop down there uh, and hopefully be able to chat to a few of you. And um, finally, just thank you, Mike and Ben, for a great day and for allowing me to speak. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Brilliant. There was a couple of questions um, in there, but I know that people are going to come down to the Hilton Garden in and um, have a, 